All right, we are live. Hello, everybody on YouTube. Hello, everybody else who's watching this on BitChute and all the other alternative places we will be uploading this. Uh, also to uh, DTube. And this is TruthForce coming to you. Check me out over on steamit.com slash at TruthForce. And we'll have all the links down to everything, all our other social media on Minds and everything below. And today I'm joined by uh, Amy. And if you would like to introduce yourself, uh, kind of what you're about and uh, some of your channels and what you're interested in. Okay, thank you so much, Truth Force. Uh, I'm Amaterasu Solar. Amy, because most people can't say Amaterasu. <laughs> anyway, uh, I am on YouTube. I have both a main channel and a backup channel. They're virtually identical, except my main channel has videos going much further back. Um, one is Amaterasu and the other is Amater Amaterasu Solar and the other is Amaterasu Solar again. Imagine that. Uh, I put up videos that I produce, I write and produce and do the speaking in the whole nine yards and uh, mainly it's about how we can fix this planet if we decide to individually each of us making that choice not any sort of collective which I really loathe uh, <laughs> the whole collective idea. But if enough of us individually make these choices, we can create much better. Most of my work is geared towards that. Uh, I'm also on uh, Steemit. Peak, which is related to Steemit. And uh, I am on BitChute, all under Amaterasu Solar. And I also have a forum that if anyone is interested in join, joining, it's called it.boards.net. And uh, there, there it is in the podcast. Look at that. You're all set to go. Yep. <laughs> I had it all open. <laughs> Very cool. Yes. Uh, so at any rate... Um, I think that's pretty much, look, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Gab, uh, see. How is Gab, by the way? That's actually a place I was thinking of joining recently. Well, I tell you, I really liked it until they decided to make changes. Now, you know, whereas before they let you know what was trending, and another couple of few things that I preferred suddenly you have no idea what's trending so you just take stabs in the dark when you're adding your hashtags <laughs> but uh, uh, it's it's pretty good I I enjoy it you know it, it I I actually like it better than Twitter because at least see with Twitter I've got evidence that Occasionally, they censor me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Rate, yeah, Gab, I mean, Twitter's getting pretty bad. I, I don't even want to make a Twitter for us. I just went to Mines instead, but Gab seems like a good place to go also. Yeah, Gab, Gab, Gab does not seem to have any motivation to, to censor me. For that reason, I give it the higher score than Twitter. Twitter for oh, since 2012, I think. Uh, oh, it, it's amazing how much re response I don't get these days. Oh, yeah. So, they throttle a lot now. We're seeing that on some of our YouTube stuff, actually. Sometimes we only get like five views on something. Yeah, well, I'm really active in uh, putting my my videos out. Uh, put them out, of course, on Twitter and on Gab, and then I post them post them to Steemit. 
uh, I post them in my forum, and then I email a bunch of people, and then I go to Skype, and I Skype the link to everybody there, <laughs> you know. So I usually wind up with about 100 views, give or take, within a few days of posting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, when we, I um, also, we, we're I up on Minds, too, if you... You should yeah, use Minds if you're not in there. I, got, I, got, I was on Minds, and the whole thing just confused the heck out of me. It was a very non-intuitive platform. So, so I just gave up on it. You know, if it, if it makes me wonder how the heck, why the heck, and, you know, where the heck, it's like, eh, get it. You know, I, I, I don't need that kind of frustration. Yeah. But, you know, maybe, they'll, they, maybe they've improved. Yeah, it's, mine's is still a little cumbersome, and it's there's kind of like a lot of information thrown at you. It's not like as smooth and sleek, I, I think, is their issue. Yeah, yeah, it definitely was not sleek. When I post things and get zero response, no matter what I tried to do, and it was like I was in a dark cave alone, throwing things around. <laughs> I went, well, you know. Yeah, we. I don't think my energy is best spent there. Yeah, we've been on there for a while, and we finally got like thirty something subscribers. But I mean, it probably took months and months just nonstop posting to kind of get there. So I think it's just maybe not too many people use it. I think is I, the main issue. That may be. I, you know, I was. I, I only have one subscriber that I'm aware of, because uh, I, like I said, I haven't been there in quite a while. But I had uh, one subscriber, and it was a person that turned me on to it. <laughs> yeah. Said, well, why don't, you, why don't you try this place? So I did, and we subbed each other, and you no, know, I, I. Struggled to figure it all out, and then just went. I'm I'm gonna stick with Bitchute as an option, and uh, you know YouTube. Unfortunately, you know, I, I've had YouTube mess with me, and uh, I have one video up. I have two videos up about being messed with. Yeah, and the first video didn't get it make any difference. I was having comments shadow banned. I'd I'd see them. No one else was seeing them, and I checked this because with two channels on two different, uh, one on Firefox and one on Opera, and so I could check to see if my comments were showing up. <laughs> and by golly, they still weren't. You know they. Right in the middle of a conversation, something where I've said something important, shadow banned. So I, I did a video for YouTube, and it's entitled YouTube Notice of Liability. We are now in, uh, what's the term? Uh, it's not disgrace, but it is disgraceful. Um, I don't know why my brain just is not picking up the term. I know what it is. But uh, they have not responded to that video other than I have yet to find one of my comments shadow banned ever since. Now that may change. But I hope not. Yeah, you know what? I we Our channel, I noticed that sometimes our comments get zero likes on youtube and we'll we'll be one of the first people like me and uh the other guy share the username so we'll like go and comment on other people's stuff and try to you know talk with people and sometimes our comments never show up to them and we'll get zero likes on them sometimes we'll get two or three likes i've commented on other people's videos and gotten like hundreds of likes and mm -hmm. i'll comment back to somebody on that same video and then nobody will get any likes on it but there'll be all these replies and the, I don't know what's going on with that stuff to be honest well in my video I made it very clear that I felt that they they owed me 
for the time I spent with these comments. And I also gave them some of my expectations. I've seen little to no evidence that these problems have continued. So maybe if we all start giving them notice of liability, you know, the next step, if they start messing with me anymore, I am going to send a notice of liability to their piece of business, uh, register, return receipt, the whole nine yards. And I, in there, I think I demanded about $150,000 for messing with me. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I'm not going to press it until and unless they start messing with me again. Should they start messing with me again, that will be going out. I, I'm not going to stand for being bullied. I mean, they already have taken down several of my videos. Lately, they haven't been giving me strikes. They haven't taken one down since before that notice of liability. They were taking them down at first, giving me strikes. And then they were taking them down, uh, just basically slapping my hand. You know, you didn't get a strike, but... Yanny, 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 bullying and harassment, right? You know, right. So. Yeah, I actually got a um, link for you here that uh, might might apply to you. So there's actually a couple of guys on Steemit uh, who started a lawsuit against Facebook, Google, and Twitter's ban of uh, banning cryptocurrency. And they're also, um, I think, trying to go after them for free speech issues as well on a separate one. Um, but... Um, a while back, Facebook, uh, Google, and Twitter banned all cryptocurrency advertisements, and that made the price of uh, crypto crash because there wasn't any more people buying into it, and there wasn't any, like, you know, you can't really grow your business when you're banned from advertising it. So it really yeah. affected so, a lot of people. Just, just to let you know how rich I am on Steemit, as of today, my account value estimate is at thirteen dollars and thirty two cents. There you go. I'm I'm rolling in it, honey. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, I, I've been here. Um, I've been on here about two years, I'd say. And I can. I, there's actually something I could look up real quick to tell you how much I've made. But I mean, it's it's probably less than a thousand dollars in two years. But it's you know, it's at least something. Well, um, this you know. I'd I've been on Steemit since November of 2017. I've never, you know, I mean, I think I've occasionally poked, you know, an, a, a Steam yeah. dollar uh, to promote or something. But other than that, I have done nothing else. And as you can tell, I'm just mega popular or something. <laughs> Yeah, I've I've been here t about two years, and I, I earned a thousand seventy one steam in total. And the last thirty days, I earned like one hundred twenty eight steam. But that's only because um, I don't know if you've heard of Three Speak, but they they give some pretty big upvotes if you upload your videos to Three Speak. So they're kind of I've never never even heard of that. Yeah, Three? they're they're new. I I could put a link down in here as well. Yeah, do that, because I, I would like to look into it, because, yeah, I got some videos I could upload. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, they're kind of like a um, um, a place for uploading, vi like, kind of short videos, because they, they are like a service. So, mm -hmm. essentially, you, you give them, like, $4 worth of Steam, and you can upload, like, up to two hours of, of video, and it's on, like, a decentralized thing that doesn't get deleted, which is pretty nice. And um, cool. you also get, like, big upvotes, too, occasionally. So it pretty much pays for itself, which is pretty nice. I've got, uh, yeah, I don't think I have four Steam. Oh, you'll you'll earn it because we've upvoted you a few times. So I think you'll, yeah, you'll get enough it's, soon. It's, it's starting to creep upwards, but well, we'll see. Anyway, uh, yeah, all virtually all of my videos are less than 10 minutes except for a 
couple that, uh, uh, you know, I, like the one I just did is 11 minutes and 10 seconds. So, you know, it's a little more than 10 minutes, but most of them, like two minutes, I would say seven minutes is where most of them sit in between six and seven minutes. I don't have, I don't make big, long, drawn out videos as a rule. Yeah. I made, I made one, uh, the first video that I did in my, my, uh, series that I've started doing, uh, called, do you have the balls? That one's 15 minutes and some few seconds. But, uh, that's the longest video I have ever produced. Oh my gosh, was it a challenge? <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know. I, that, so yeah, that's that's the sort of place it would be very good. Thank you very much for that link. Yeah, <clears throat> I will be working with that for sure. Yeah, it's always good to have all these places of uploading decentralized like outlets so they can't be deleted i don't know if you're on d um d tube as well that's another one where it connects so these both like connect through the steam blockchain so like when you upload stuff to d tube oh. or to three speak it'll also like post it on like the steam blockchain essentially like as if you posted it on steam it okay so you can well, get upvoted for it too thing that uh that i i, I gave up on d tube yeah and that was when I, the last time I put up, I tried to put up my Radical Problems video. And it, you know, it sat there and cranked and cranked and cranked. And I just kind of went away and did other things, figuring, you know, it'll be done sooner or later. I came back like a couple of hours later, and it was still cranking going okay what is going on and it turned you know i'd spent some towards promoting it and i finally just refreshed to see if it had taken well they took my little bit i didn't spend very much they took my little bit of stuff the video was not there and it's still not there and so, so yeah, I just went, no, no, we're not, we're not going there. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I can post it on YouTube and then post it on Steam it through that option. I'm all good. <laughs> oh. Um, let's see here. So there, so we were talking about Greta a little bit before we uh, went live here. The Greta Thunberg story, as many people have been seeing. Um, so there's a few different angles, I think, that we could we could both bring up uh, that will really inform, uh, like, the general public and the masses. Um, because the mainstream media is, is promoting her as this organic, um, somehow grassroots movement that's swept up behind this 16-year-old girl. Um, but in reality... Uh, just to briefly say she's Soros funded. Um, there's going to be yep. some posts down below where I, I made a few posts on it too. And she's been caught um, wearing Antifa shirts. Uh, her parents were as well. And there's just a lot of shadiness going on with it. I mean, you know, a 16 year old girl randomly isn't going to become some spokesperson and have a million Twitter followers all of a sudden. I mean, it doesn't, no. it, nothing adds up. So um, I'd kind of like to get your take on it, and then I could tell you, like, some... We could go over, like, some of the stuff I, I did some research on, and we could um, put it all together. Well, uh, as far as my take on her, as you said, she is Soros-funded. You know, her handler is through her, which is a Soros slash Bill and Melinda Gates slash Bono the rest of them, you know, <laughs> the rest of the psychopaths in control. And uh, she's she's with Greta in a zillion different pictures in different places. So, you know, she's affiliated with Greta. 
And uh, one one video I saw was of this interviewer who sought her out and finally managed to get to her and started asking her questions. And she kind of was mumbling and she took her hat off. And that apparently is the sign because as soon as she took her hat off, this woman moves in and tells the reporter that she's got other things to do right now and takes her away. It was very clear that this is, this was like, I can't deal with the questions. I don't have the answers. Please get me out of this move, right? She was, she was just, hey, can, you know, the thing that gets to me is that she gets up there and she's got a script and she keeps looking at it and looking at it and delivering the lines like so impassionate, impassioned. And then she's sitting on a, you know, whenever she gets into a live questioning situation, like one, she, uh, she says, I, I, I think you should, I, I, I think you should be asking other members of this panel these questions. And there's like no passion. And I'm like, if she is as passionate as they are portraying her to be, she should be on fire to answer all these questions with all the data she has. Yep. It's it's pretty clear that she is totally just reading her script and then lost when she doesn't have one. Oh yeah, and then <laughs> so I mean the other fact too that you know when you're 16 years old you really don't have a strong body of knowledge or a history of reading and research that you can really bring up. So I mean the fact that all of these people are listening to a 16 16 year old to begin with. Is, is just insane, too, just to throw that in there. <laughs> I, I agree. It's like, if I could, I could understand, you know, I'm not saying that a 16-year-old couldn't do a massive amount of research on a topic. Could. But then, if it impassions them, a start talking to people and anybody and everybody that will listen to them they're talking to and that includes reporters you know they if if they are really on fire about something that's what they want to do and it's pretty clear that unless she's thrown thrown on a podium with a script she has no interest yep just none so you know, I, I, and I think about all these people who should be seeing this, this disconnect. <laughs> they should, they they should be able to see it, and they don't. And that's what scares me. Yeah the 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 first time I saw her speak, I I immediately thought like. It doesn't seem like she's really into it. There's like kind of no passion into what she's saying. It it seems like she's kind of just regurgitating things. And I I was kind of confused as to why anybody was taking her seriously. And I was surprised at how much media attention she was getting until um, some of the people were, who were photographed with her um, at all of these events um, that the person who we're talking about that's the uh, her, her essentially her climate change coach or whatever you want to call her basically her handler um, yes. yeah her, this person's name is uh, Louisa Marie Neubauer I think I'm, that's it yeah I think Neubauer is the way to pronounce that and um, they she is belongs to an organization called one foundation which is connected to Bono Bill and Melissa Gates and of course George Soros because He's in everything, and yep. um, she's been photographed numerous times at numerous events where she's directly next to Thunberg or directly behind her as Thunberg's reading. And um, you know, the, and the the fact that Thunberg sailed across the let's talk about this too. It's like a ten million or fifteen million dollar boat or something like that, that solar panel, that actually had a backup diesel engine on it, which most people might not have heard of. 
um, in case it failed. Uh, so I thought that was kind of funny because they're saying, oh, how, how look how green we are. But um, the, yes. the fact that, you know, she didn't build that boat or really have any part in it. She basically just went with the people who actually sailed the ship and she might have helped out in some in some way. I'm not doubting that she couldn't help out, but I mean, uh, you know, rigging up the sails and stuff is kind of like a, you kind of like need some muscle for that. And she looks like she's almost four foot 11, maybe not yeah, to, I, not to be heightist or anything, but <laughs> I don't really see her doing too much manual labor on a boat. Exactly. Oh no, she, she, I, and I'm going to be very honest with you. I have some serious doubts about gender. I am not absolutely certain that that individual isn't equipped with male anatomy. Oh, okay. I haven't heard about that. Oh, I... yeah. There's been quite a lot of people who've been pointing it out. And if you, if you look, I mean, she's got no really feminine movements, no really feminine anything about her. It's it's all the sto sort of behavior that you might expect from a little boy. Yeah, she's so, very. I say she kind of has this androgynous look now that I look at her face. Yeah, you know, it's it's it could go either way. And you know, I, I you know I don't think that everybody is that we see is the opposite sex of what they purport to be. However, I think there's a fair number of them that are absolutely certain that that the first quote lady unquote that we had with Obama isn't a female. And when he said to I forget some group he was talking to, some mucky muck group, Michael and I want to and I went, Michael? Yep. You mean Michelle? <laughs> Easy mistake, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah you, you always make mistake, name mistakes about your spouse, an opposite gender name. I mean, right. So, yeah, you know, so I'm thinking it's very conceivable that Greta is not a female, a biological female is conceivable. I give it fair probability. That's one thing that I wanted to mention that's sort of off the topic, but it has to do with the way people approach data. Mm -hmm. Most people look at data and they decide in their mind, true, false. One or the other. How most people deal with data. My father, and bless him, I wish he was still with us. My father, very early on in life, told me never leave anything. Nothing. Instead, face probabilities and adjust those probabilities as new data come along. Asking yourself when evaluating those data, does this explain what I see? So I can never say for 100% anything is true, or 100% anything is false. I can give you probabilities that often approach 100% or approach 0% on any given thing. I find that one thing this has allowed me to do is not attach emotionally to any given thing. That makes it easier when data that counter my high probabilities come along and it explains what I see. Drop my probabilities down. So I'm not emotionally attached. And Makes I, sense. Think that, I think that's a very good thing to teach all of our children. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that. 
um, a lot of what's being taught now is just this emotional um, response as like the first thing that everybody latches on to. It's, it's almost like everybody's becoming lemmings, like the, the video game or whatever, just running off a cliff and following each other. And it's, and it's really quite telling that a lot of people will just tune in to some talking head on TV and somehow because that person's talking and you're looking at them and they're on a screen there's good production value uh, a lot of people confuse that for just believing everything they say which which i think is um it's it's like you have to have a sort of charisma to get people to listen to you to start with i, I like to kind of say is how it works right. right and then and then once people start listening to you if they don't know much about the topic but you seem like you know what you're talking about they'll just take your word for it and that's that's what like the mainstream media is and it's yeah. and, it, and they don't yeah. back up their their stuff with a lot of details or here's why this is this and here's why that's that instead it's just guest after guest all repeating the same thing but not showing you you know it's like when you went to school and the teacher said show your work on how you got to this um, math problem solution and right they're not doing that, you know. Oh, I, I remember back in the day, early on, the news broadcasts just give you the facts, ma'am. Just the facts. Ma'am, I don't know if you're old enough to know that reference. But I think it was Dragnet where the lead guy, I forget his name, would say, just the facts, ma'am. Just the facts. Anyway, <laughs> it became sort of a, a cultural thing at the time to say, just the facts, ma'am. Just the facts. Now, they'll say, so-and-so, this horrible individual already making some kind of value judgment that isn't facts, did this terrible thing. Again, value judgment, not just the facts. They say, if they said, this person did that, that's just the facts. But they insert all these emotion-evoking words. Oh, and, and, and it's no longer just the facts. Yep. <laughs> it's an absolute spin. Yeah, and it's it's interesting that most people weren't aware of the spin, but at the same time, a lot of people were. So, like, they used there used to be that saying where it's like, "Don't go to war with people who buy ink by the barrel because they'll destroy you," and you know that meant that was meant to be like whoever yes. controls the printing press controls everything because that's what everybody reads, and. Yeah. You really can't compete with them unless you have your own printing press and then you have to somehow get people to buy it and then you have to sell it and you have to constantly get more and more um, subscriptions and you have to have all these people working for you. Whereas now, um, I almost feel like it could go either way with what's going on because there's independent creators like us and then right. and then there's people who are also manipulating the system to grow large and to put out disinformation who are, who were also competing against. And I, and I, I'm sometimes I get all wrapped up in my head thinking about who's really going to come out on top here. And is this going to just keep getting worse because of the new rules that YouTube is putting in place where they're going to show you the big corporate channels and just the big channels and you're never going to see stuff from maybe truth force's channel right so yeah. it's it i don't know i don't know how to get around that except just by networking and, and making more friends and um and yep. asking people to share organically i guess is that's that's basic almost all of my videos i didn't mention it in this last one but almost all of my videos Impress that sharing data, sharing information is of vital importance. 
Because no, they're they're never going to bring me on the nightly news to talk about how we can get rid of the psychopaths in control. Never going to happen because the psychopaths in control own the corporations. Yep. That, and the the thing that we've got to, uh, under a uh, grasp. I don't like the word understand. Uh, no. But the thing we've got to grasp is that all news outlets are listed as entertainment. They are corporations of entertainment, which means they could tell us that the sky just turned purple with pink polka dots. I, like I mean, they could, they could tell us that. <laughs> that doesn't mean it's true, but, but they could tell us that. And sound like they're telling the truth. Even though, of course, they aren't. But also, there was some legislation, I don't know, it's been about a decade or maybe some, maybe more. Some legislation that was attempted to make it legal, a legal requirement that all news purporting to be news be true, best of their ability. Needless to say, every single media, you know, big media outlet got it in time and won. So now we know they're not legally obligated to tell us the truth. Oh, yeah. I, I just can't see why anyone would waste their time watching it unless all they want to do is be entertained. Yeah, it's turning into the the World Res Worldwide uh, Wrestling Federation here, essentially. WWE, WWF, whatever. Um, yep. And it's... I mean, if, if we just examine some of the most recent things, events and speeches where that Greta person gave, it's 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 almost like it's a form of pornography. I, I like to call it outrage porn, where people are tuning in for their like dopamine hit and it's just like getting them off, you know, to watch like, oh, look at this, you know, look how smart she is. She's only 16 years old and she's taken on the entire government of, of, of the world and she's taken on the most powerful bullies and look at her go and these people are just like getting off on like this this um david versus goliath thing happening that's totally not organic and you know backed oh, by a billionaire and scripted like, and you know fully manufactured fully manufactured i mean well and then you take a look at things like a pick a gun event any gun event that they put in the news and i've had people say oh people people would really have really died in these they just had an mk ultra person go in there and do the shooting i'm sitting here trying to explain to them that if i wanted to build a perspective that guns were bad and we needed to get rid of guns arm everybody so that I can and just walk all over them I would want to control the narrative 100% I wouldn't want the possibility of say a witness coming forth and saying that's not how it happened I was there and I saw this I would not want real families answers I would not want them demanding real investigations. I sure as hell would not want them filing real lawsuits. I'd want to fake the whole thing. This is why, you know, I mean, I'm thinking just off the top of my head, Las Vegas, Orlando, Free Stoneman Douglas, uh, Boston, that's the initial one, whose name I will not say, but I'll give you the initials, and I will not say it because 
it seems to tick off censorship like nothing but sh mm -hmm. okay you look at all of these and when you start looking at the information the actual data surrounding them there is no possible way that these could have been the way that we were told they were there's none and you know <laughs> Again, they don't have to tell us the truth. They can tell it to tell any play. I mean, they could come in and say, Othello really did this. And, you know, <laughs> as if it's real. Yep. But, so, yeah, there's really no and, way to question any of it either. And I, I look at, I, I look at the politics all politics seems to be actors following a script. I mean, when you when you grasp that all all governments on our planet, not counting some very very few local governments that have deliberately unincorporated their area. All governments are corporations. And corporations are not going to let Joe Public choose their CEO and their other officers. They're just not. So when you say, okay, we've got United States, which can be found in the United States Code to be defined as a corporation... You have that, then you tell yourself, stumble into that voting booth. Am I making any kind of difference? That corporation isn't going to let me choose their CEO. Um, you have to arrive at the, the, the conclusion that no, voting does nothing. But registering to vote that is really what they want because anytime you register anything or giving it to the state the king or you know whatever the 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 one that's running your particular corporation or giving it to the state in exchange for a privilege so if you register your car are giving it to the state for the privilege of being told by the state that you are allowed to drive. Which really most of us are not driving, which requires us being do us doing commercial work. So Uber drivers, they're driving. Taxi drivers, they're driving. But, ah, yes, very good. You've got the Thank you, patient zero. Yep, that's out of you at coordinate. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, isn't the um? So it, yeah, right. So like you're saying, they're they're driving because it's a commercial purpose, but citizens are technically traveling, right? Isn't that oh, what? Not it, what it not means? not citizens. Now you gotta also understand that's problematic too. <laughs> Human beings, not in the way. The, uh, in the way we commonly use the term and not the way the legal uses right. it as monster but living flesh beings uh, only become citizens when they consent to be okay if you look I've got a video, video out called trusts okay and this really helps to understand where we're at on our planet uh, initially, it was understood that anyone and everyone who were born here upon the planet had an interest in the planet. In other words, the planet belongs to all of us. Now, um, in the 1400s, through the Pope, 
psychopaths at the time that were in control just up and declared they were the trustees of everybody else on the planet were all incompetent and they were taking control the trust <clears throat> that interestingly enough I think there was a Mandela that went down because when I first discovered it it was called the Unum Sanctum and now when you look it up it's Unam Sanctam which is the feminine version of Unum Sanctum which is the male version be that as it may uh, <clears throat> the Unam Sanctam is now what they used to initially declare us all under their trusteeship. And then in the 1600s, they added the Sestui KV trusts. Now, the Sestui KV trusts basically just solidified this, the trustee status and keeping us from what belongs to us. And upon that was built the legal system. So, I forget why I was brought that brought all this up, but basically, this planet belongs to you and me. It belongs to no one else. <laughs> but they keep us from our planet through all this legal garbage. Yep. And oh. right from right from the get go, it's a fraud and a theft. And so everything built upon it is all of the government corporations and the whole nine yards is invalid. Yeah, and what I say I could I could list some uh, some examples. Uh, so if if, if uh, people haven't heard about this before or exactly what we're talking about, so um, what what we're talking about is how. There's, there's a lot of these contracts that we never agreed to be a part of or we never signed. Um, so technically, it was always been this way, so you have to follow it type of thing, right? So it's more of um, – it's, it's, it's forced by the government to get you to do what the law of the land says. But when you're born, you're a baby. You obviously can't consent to be any kind of a um, – willing participant in signing anything because you're a baby and you don't understand anything. Um, and so therefore, you, you technically never sign any contracts saying, I'm going to be a U.S. citizen, I'm going to follow these laws, I'm always going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to pay taxes, blah, blah, blah. blah. Um, and, and then when you grow older, you, you also technically don't sign something that specifically says I'm going to pay taxes, I'm going to follow this law, I'm going to follow that law, I agree to this, and then in, in return the government's going to tax me for roads and bridges or whatever. Like technically you never agree to almost any of this stuff. Um, right. I don't think there's actually anything we agree to that that would be considered like legal, right? Because you have to be of sound mind and um, able to understand a contract and not be forced into it. Whereas the government forces everybody into a contract because it's at the um, point of a gun or threat of jail or threat of fining if you don't follow um, their laws. So so pretty much and every government of, contract is null and void, essentially. Threat of being bullied. Right. That covers everything. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's true. You know, one of the things that, ha you know, having withdrawn consent, I will not create controversy by refusing to be subject. I counter their offer to make me subject with my own offer. I will be happy to be subject if they prove I am subject. Now, having withdrawn my consent... There is no such proof. None. Anywhere. At all. So by doing that, not creating controversy by refusing to be subject, but instead being a gentle one and making my counteroffer, 
the only way that they can to me is to be a bully be uh, in disgrace is their only option unless they can prove I'm subject which they don't have any proof of yep and that goes all the way back to the whole um, you know we never signed I mean unless you did sign something saying I am a full willing participant of all these laws then they don't have any thing exactly yep and even at that even if you did sign something you probably did not sign it fully informed and you can always withdraw your signature yep that is correct as well draw your signature say i no longer i'm in this contract i i withdraw my signature don't consent Unless you prove I am a subject. And, you know, if I, I've i never had to you know, face-to-face deal with anybody on this issue yet. But should I, <clears throat> should I ever find myself in that position and it does something like pull out their gun or cock their fists back, or, you know, like a police person threatening me with bodily harm I will just look them in the eye and I'll say oh I do not contest that you can be a bully I need no proof of that (laughs) that just hopefully will make them think of course you know when when just a few people are doing this bullying will work to an extent They, they may get you into jail or whatever Never, ever, ever answer a single question. Not of anybody. When they ask you a question, the answer is, I'll be happy to answer that question for you if you prove I am subject. (laughs) When they drag you into court, you say, I'll be happy to engage this court if you prove I am subject. And generally speaking, I can tell you, unless you've got some really tweaky judge, if you go about it that way, they will let you walk out. Only exceptions will be if you have broken what I call the three laws of ethics. They're technically principles, not laws, but people grasp law better than principle. And the three principles or laws of ethics uh, be simple and cover the things that absolutely no one would say do to them ever. Never a single person would say, oh yeah, that'd be fine with me. I'll find them. Three laws of ethics are the foundation of the law because being principles they fall into the natural law and basically they can be covered by saying do not willfully and without fully informed consent hurt or kill the flesh of another That's the first one Do not willfully and without fully informed consent take or damage anything that does not belong to you alone. The second and the third is another. It can only happen without fully informed consent. Very simple. If you've done any of those three, well, baby, you are subject to whatever comes along will solve for the problem that you have created I had a video on a lot of stuff on this subject yeah if you want to say if there's any videos you want to put in there just uh, put it in the discord and then I'll add them to the uh, description a little bit later okay um, I'm uh 
for setting myself free. Just let me get the link for that. And then uh, some of the other topics that I think uh, we could probably go over. Um, there was some more news about um, potential impeachment for for Trump and the circus that's been going around with that. It seems yeah. like um, the Demo more entertainment. Yeah, more, more entertainment. entertainment. Yeah, more entertainment. <laughs> so it seems like. Um, so so just thinking about it logically, if if the if the Mueller investigation truly found something within with two and a half years, maybe it was two years, they they would have came forward or maybe not. You know, it, you know, like I said, it's all an illusion of choice anyway. And it depends on which deep state actors are outplaying the other deep state actors on the other side, because there's always sides involved in this. Um I'm of the opinion that if Mueller found something, he and their team, they would have truly put it out and went for impeachment right away, and that would have given them a better chance at truly getting an impeachment uh, against Trump. Um, I understand, well, like, the strategy that they're using, though, is they needed to obviously get the House um, to have some power. So I understand they couldn't do it too quickly, and, you know, I'm, that's not to say Trump is devoid of any wrongdoing, of course, you know, uh, but that's oh. all very subject as well, because as we talked about, all these laws don't really apply and none of us really sign up for will, a lot of this stuff either. I'm going to say, tell you my my perspective on this whole Trump stuff, okay? Yep. And given that... These psychopaths that are in control own the corporation have put the people they want in in the positions and put on a politics play for us and deep state is just one plot element uh, the deeper state controls the planet not just the United States they're the ones that are going for the new world order. Uh, this is just, this is exactly what I called it. It's just entertainment. Nothing more. It, there's, it's just to keep the, keep the illusion that there's the Democrats versus the Republicans and you know, each side is going, oh, look at what the other side is doing. And then first we'll focus on this side and, oh, how awful it is. And then, oh, look at that side. Oh, how awful it is. Oh, look, this side did something good. So they must be the good guy. Oh, no, the, the dirty bird that controls both wings being on the puppet show, you know, the little finger puppet show or feather puppet if it's a bird, <laughs> you know, uh is is just tamed with the play moving our perspective the way they want it to be moved and that's my perspective i think the whole trump did wrong or trump didn't do wrong or whole thing it's just part of the script it's a very complex and a uh, widespread script and has many scenes and some of the scenes don't even seem to be related they're all there for the purpose of moving the perspective as the psychopaths want it to be oh i, mean, I agree yep the the thing the thing that that is was is a big clue that this is a planetary thing is when we have the psyops New Zealand and France and England Germany uh, the other countries it tells me that whatever's in charge of all this is a planetary power I don't doubt it I mean, 
uh, the New World Order and all those types of things. Um, well, it's actually funny to think about how the New World Order was 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 pushed because that was a way for a lot of people to get um, pushed into looking at the New World Order while the the actual New World Order isn't really being looked at and a lot of people don't know like about the secrets. Um, I mean, we all have heard of like the Rothschilds and George Soros. Like those are like the public ones that yes. we can find out about, but not um, a lot is known about who controls them and where they came from and all those types of basically. things. Yeah. You know, I I don't know who they are, but I can say for sure they are psychopaths. Because if they were not psychopaths, they would not leave humanity on a vastly rich planet that belongs to all of them in poverty, starvation, sickness. That is what you get when you have psychopaths in control whether they're human or not. Now, I don't know. I, you know, some people say, oh, they're demons and, you know, so on and so forth. And I don't totally discount the metaphysical as a possibility in this, but I have to give higher probability that if there is some larger or more durable force than what we are allowed to see, is probably E.T. And I say that because this clearly is a uh, generational thing. We have a fair amount written in very old documents like Sumerian that highly suggest that some beings came down from out there and monkeyed with our DNA, so to speak. So, uh, oh, no, I'm going to give that the highest probability. We have ET involved on our planet, and I don't know if you've looked into anything that Michael Tsarian says. You know him? Uh, no, I'm not familiar. Okay, well, he's he's got a theory seems to think is true and the story basically goes like this these bad guys are being chased across the galaxy by these good guys and the bad guys arrived in our solar system and set up a decoy on the planet Tiamat and then hunkered down on earth tried to hide the good guys arrived, saw the uh, decoy on Tiamat, checked it for any level life, you know, sentient, sapient, that wasn't the people they were chasing, saw there was none, blew it up, but just to be on the safe side, started checking around the other planets, and decided... Wait a minute, something looks fishy with this planet here, but oh my gosh, look at all that sentient, sapient life going on down there. Can't blow this up. You better put some kind of barrier around the planet so they can't, you know, the bad guys can't get out. They can't just kill all these beings. So that's what they did. He says there is a barrier that we cannot get through, totally encircling our globe. And this is why we never see pictures from anywhere closer than, I mean, further out than low Earth orbit. All the images that we have seem to be, and NASA admits, they're stitched together, taken from low Earth orbit. And then they make up all these landings. Well, that's possible. I give that a good probability of being true. It would explain what I see. And, you know, I 
think to myself, maybe Alex Jones was telling us the truth, the truth in plain sight by going with prison planet. Maybe that's more literal than people assumed. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know for sure. I, I do recommend looking into some of the things that Michael Tsarian says. He talks about other things, so, you, you know, you won't always hit, hit that nail every time you look at something. But that's spelled T-S-A-R-I-O-N. Okay, yeah. Sounds like a good one. Have to check that one out. Yeah, he's he's got some good stuff. And... Uh, this would explain also why there is a generational plan, because he says that these beings do live a very long time. And, <clears throat> pardon me, they uh, would be able to keep this plan on course. Because if if psychopaths are the ones, if you, if you watch my most recent vid and several of my other vids, you'll understand that money systems will promote psychopaths to power. That is why we have psychopaths in power on our planet. Uh, and psychopaths are not they really don't care about anyone but themselves. Genetically speaking, the genetic psychopaths literally can't care. They are incapable of caring, compassion, love, or empathy for others. And, you know, it, people talk about the families at the top inbreeding to retain the gene that causes psychopathy um, psychopaths not being interested in anyone but themselves are going to be not extremely interested in working for something they're not going to see finished unless they have somebody that they feel they must accept as above them in some fashion watching them on. See what I'm saying? Oh, I agree. The Most of... Well, let's say they say that politics um, attracts a lot of psychopaths because of the ability to gain power and the ability... Um, the power comes from all of the taxes and, and the, the territory they control. And if you look at how how much power, let's say, just pick any random state um, in the United States, right? I mean, one of those states, well, I guess except for some of the smaller and the low population states, but um, some of the states, like if you looked at like Florida or Texas or something, people couldn't even conceive of having one ruler to rule over them for 20 or 30 million or 40 million people, right? So politics will attract a lot of these quote-unquote rulers, I, I like to call them, um, who want to just rule over you, micromanage you, make all these rules for you, be in control of where things are going, put in their, their, their legacy and their plan to keep the control going long after they have died. And the... A lot of it doesn't make any sense because how can one person control 30 million people in the state of Texas or Florida, for example, and how can they pass laws that would benefit all of those people? It's literally impossible. And if you think about like, you know, it, it may have made sense many, many centuries ago when to to have a certain system that was organized but as people start to learn the truth about what the government really is it has to we have to change things and we have to decentralize and 
make the government smaller and smaller and smaller until oh, eventually no, it no. goes away. We don't have to, we can't make the government do anything. That's the big problem. They're a corporation. They do what they want. You cannot tell them what to do in any way, shape, or form. I mean, do you think that uh, uh, Microsoft is going to let people tell them how they're going to operate their business? Oh. <laughs> do you think uh, Kellogg's is going to let people come in and say, oh, you've got to do this differently? <laughs> I don't mean Thanks. voting them out. I mean by using different forms of, like, like for instance, um, reducing the amount of taxes that government gets by using cryptocurrency so that they can't tax you would, well, would they can't, eventually they can't. make them you smaller do. over time. Do you know that taxes are voluntary? And if you ever get a tax bill from the feds, if you write, I will be happy to pay this if you prove I am subject, guess what? You never hear from them again. They have no proof. It is written specifically that they are voluntary. So they cannot prove that you are subject to it. And by the way, uh, a friend of mine is very much into uh, the secured party creditor, which moves you from the debtor status that they put us in into the creditor state that we were born into. Uh... Let me see if I can find that link. I had that link somewhere. Um, uh, yeah, I was going to say, if you want to put that link in there. Um, and, uh, but my, my friend helps people. Yep. Yeah, yeah put, I'll, I'll put that link in the description also. Yeah, let me, let me see if I can find it. I think it's here. I think I have it in. Uh, and I was going to say, we're getting a little long on time. Um, we're at like at 71 minutes. I, I would uh, maybe like another five minutes or so. I, I could probably do okay. if that was all right. Okay. I found, found the link. So yeah, that's fine. I just want to get this in here before uh, end. Okay, yep, I'll, I'll put it in. And yep. That is the, uh, that is a, uh, my friend's company. I think that we really don't need to go through all those hoops, just withdraw our consent and consent to better, which is what my blueprint is to give us something to consent to. Which is on my YouTube channel in my playlists, you know, on both channels. They both they both start out with the blueprint and then the detailed blueprint goes. And uh, but this this is engaging that system and still winding up essentially in the same place taxes. You don't have to have car insurance. You don't have to have car licenses, driver's licenses. You know, any of that stuff when you become the creditor. I highly recommend looking in at and, you know, getting in touch with them and be asking some questions and they are likely to give you direction to do your own research because they are very much into you know we're not just going to we can't handle all hand you all the answers because each individual is in a little different place do your own research you move into this they do charge for it but then we live in a world where if you don't charge for the work you do i can't survive <laughs> Uh, from 
what I can tell, it's well worth every penny. Once you pay them the money, they they they're they start asking you questions and looking for research for you. Uh, you can ask questions without paying them the money, and they can point you in the right direction. And they keep saying they don't care whether you use their service or somebody else. Their services will basically say, here's all the paperwork. You're on your own. Bye. And they will do a lot of the work for you. Tell you exactly what you need to do if they can't do it for you. And how... And basically, not exactly take you by the hand through the whole thing, but that's probably the closest <laughs> way of saying it. So, oh, yeah, I'm just reading through it here. Yeah, it looks like uh, they got some good information here. So, I, yeah, definitely go check that out. Uh, SecuredServicesCo.com. Yeah, some of this I've heard of before, actually. So some of the stuff I'm reading through. Yeah, it looks pretty good. <clears throat> yeah, I I'm very uh very impressed with my friends work. Uh some some of the people I don't know whether your audience would remember or even know of how I see it, who became how I see the world on uh YouTube. He had a you know, a channel with like Close to 14,000 subscribers. And, uh, yeah. He, he find, they kept, uh, striking his channel for telling the truth. Imagine that. And he finally just threw up his hands and said, I'm not doing that anymore is old dog new tricks that's one word old dog and then one word new tricks and uh he he puts in a lot of stuff and i occasionally mirror his stuff uh about what's going on and uh uh Yeah, it's always good to mirror things to make sure it's not lost. Because I know a lot of these uh, YouTube channels will get deleted and they'll just, thousands of videos are gone all overnight, you know. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, you want to throw up a link to that too? I could, I could put that in there as well. Yep, I am working on finding the link to his channel. And I, I think we could probably end it about there. We're almost to 80, 80 minutes, so that's pretty long, pretty good. My, my, uh, I was, I was saying I, I wasn't sure how long it could go because I was kind of having some uh, IBS issues, but they seem to have largely cleared up, luckily. So I, I, I'm glad because it, it really, uh, you know, a lot of this. Well, I'll, I'll end with saying this: is a lot of the quote unquote food that we're being sold is not real food and. I've been learning a lot about that recently and how to take more control of my health and um, more organic and more healthy and, and, and vegetables and less chemicals. Uh, it's been <laughs> it's been quite an experience. I've lost like 35 pounds um, oh, good. within like the last six months from this and um, I'm at a pretty healthy weight now and, and seem to be doing a little bit better, but still still dealing with the you know, it could be low stomach acid. Um, there's a lot of stuff about enzymes I've been reading and how to produce more stomach acid and get everything back in the, you know, in the shape. So it's, mm -hmm. it's, you know, this, the, it's crazy. There's like 50 million Americans who have like st stomach issues and IBS. So like, it's insane. The uh, lesson I learned many, many years ago was read the label. And if you don't know what it is, don't buy it. And absolutely do not touch high fructose corn syrup. Ever. Period. 
I, uh, I, before I knew about high fructose corn syrup, I was very heavy. When I learned about high fructose corn syrup and just shifted to products that used sugar, not changing my caloric intake at all, just eliminating the high fructose corn syrup, I lost 50 pounds in three months. Oh, I believe it. I'm, I'm right there with you. I used to drink regular soda. This is probably five or six years ago. I stopped drinking regular soda and, and juice and limited amounts of my like soda intake, um, like for diet soda. But then I found out about diet soda, stopped that too. So I'm actually 100%, you know, diet soda free. I'm almost 100% caffeine free on a daily basis as well. That took a, a long time to to get yeah, to. I, I, uh, I guess I was lucky. I never liked fizzy drinks. I just didn't like the way they felt. Trying to swallow them. Ugh. So I never got into Coke and Pepsi and Undo and all that other crap. That wasn't a problem for me. And, uh, but I, I will say I am addicted to caffeine. I have my cup of coffee or rather two cups of coffee every morning, but that's the only, the only thing like that, that I consume. I am, you know, one to, uh, try to get fresh vegetables, organic, fresh vegetables. So, yeah, I stay away from anything that I think, and anything with wheat in it is almost guaranteed to have glyphosate, which yep. is Roundup. Oh, yeah. And, uh, because what they are doing now is as soon as the wheat is ready to be uh, harvested, go into the field and spray it down with glyphosate seeds and the wheat and then they take the wheat and they remove the kernels grind it up and sell it as flour to companies that make things with it and to people who want flour for their bread that they make at home and you can be guaranteed you're getting glyphosate Fortunately, the things like rice is not so beset with such chemicals. So I do not eat anything with wheat in it for that reason. I also eat very little meat, very little, and it's only because I will not eat meat that I do not know that the critter had a normal, happy, healthy life prior to its death. Everything you get in the supermarket, if it's cheap, was raised in a confined animal feeding operation. Yes. And that that's I, exactly why I stopped buying the 79-cent eggs. And once I learned and saw the conditions those poor chickens are in. And, and, oh, yeah. And, and when they say they're free range, they'll you have to also understand that some of those ones, when they're free range, they're... They might not be much better, so it's really hard to find like good, true. good. Very true. Yeah, it's it sucks, and it's really heartbreaking that they made it illegal to film a lot of those things. Where the only the only way the information was got out there about what was going on was some people, you know, snuck had, in. had snuck in and, and, and film. And there's just like all these dead chickens on the middle of of this barn, and there's all these other chickens who were sleeping on top of dead chickens and just breeding bacteria and viruses and and unhealthy oh, yeah. stuff and all this antibiotics and oh my god utterly nasty utterly yeah. nasty and i i won't i will not will not support that yep so. i i pay the the extra money for the the gmo free antibiotic free organic free range um vegetarian fed that's the other thing too a lot of the a lot of the beef and and chicken that people consume that's the cheap stuff they gr grind up all those unfortunately diseased and dead chickens and cows and feed it back to them which is terrible yes they do they put it into the feed and feed it make them cannibals and it's yeah. like no this is just not right 
Mm -hmm. Totally not right. So yeah, I I won't I won't do that. That's nasty. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um yeah, I think that's probably a good spot to end it off. A nice uh nice nice place there. Uh tr eat organic and uh GMO free foods and uh everyone listening, make sure you you, you start reading about all the things that are beginning put in your food, the glyphosate. Um, to add to that, orange juice has a lot of glyphosate in it that I just saw a report on recently. Some of the major brands of orange juice are having added glyphosate as well. And if you guys want to look into the Roundup lawsuit and how they, it was proven they were putting a lot of this stuff in there that was giving people cancer and a lot of health issues and diseases, um, that's that's where this all stems from. And um, the FDA approves this stuff and it's, you know, it's not good for us. So. Oh, the FDA is part of the corporation and it's owned by the same people that own the food, big food, yep. ag agra, big agra. They own everything. They own all the major corporations, those psychopaths. Yeah. So they'll, so support, they'll support each other. Anyway, thank you so much for having me on. Yeah, it was good talking with you. And um, for everyone who is listening, um, all the links of the stuff we've talked about will be down below in the description as well as the links uh, over to Amy's channel. So you can go uh, check out their videos as well. Give them some likes and subscribe and some shares. Um, that's the only way that we can grow is we all have to be in this um, together, you know, in, in individuals taking action to to benefit each other and um, growing uh, a decentralized uh, community is, is going to help spread the, the word and, you know, using decentralized alternatives so our stuff cannot be deleted. Um, so we're over on Steemit. We're over on um, DTube. We're over on BitChute. So you guys can check out all the links down below. And um, if you guys aren't on Steemit or haven't heard of Steemit before, it's a decentralized social media alternative where all of your posts are posted onto a blockchain called Steam. And once your posts are on there, it is extremely, extremely hard for them to be deleted because that would require all of the witnesses on the Steam server to collude. And that is very, very low probability that that will happen. So Very low. Very, very low. So, so given that, I mean, we're not saying it can't, but... The more witnesses there are, the the lower probability it is. So it's 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 considered pretty safe. Um, and I would encourage everybody to sign up to Steamit.com. They made the onboard onboarding process a lot faster now. So if, as long as you um, uh, go over and sign up uh, now, uh, I think it's instead of taking two weeks or three weeks for your account to be approved, I think it's maybe a day or two now. So. Make sure you guys check that out. And uh, Truth Force is my name on Steemit. And um, your was your name on on Steemit? Uh, sorry, I, I can't pronounce it. You want you want to pronounce your name again? <laughs> <laughs> Amateratsu Solar. A M A T E R A S U S O L A R. All righty. And then I will have the links, like I said, for all of this down below in the description. Uh, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Appreciate you sharing our content and giving us some likes. And we will see you later. Ciao.